Good day, everyone. So we are starting with Unix and Linux interview questions, intermediate level. So first one, how can you find out how much memory Linux is using? From a command shell using concatenate command, that is cat, cat and finding the contents of meminfo file from proc directory, slash proc, slash meminfo for memory usage information. And we should see a line starting something like mem and a number, okay? So this is a total memory Linux we are using. Then we can also use commands like free slash m, vm stat, top, h top. So to find out the memory. So free slash m, what will we do? So it is giving total memory, used memory, and free memory here, okay? Top command, it gives the current memory. How many processes are there? How many it is they're using? Then what all uh, CPU percentage is there? Then VM stat. It uses processes, memory, then swap, what are the swap usage, IO system, how many um, files they are using and what all. But right now proc is not mounted, so otherwise it would have, would have given the proc details also. And htop, htop gives the current usage, how many tasks are there, how many are running, how many, if there is any cron, any demons are there, how many, how many percentage of CPU memory time they are taken, like that. Okay. Then uh, there comes a question that what is the typical size for a swap partition under Linux system? So the preferred size for a swap partition is twice the amount of physical memory available on the system. If this is not possible, then the minimum size should be same as the amount of memory installed. Then what are the symbolic links? Symbolic link links act very similar to shortcuts. That like we have shortcuts in Windows, such links point to a program or file or directory. It also allows you to instant, instantly access that program or file or directory without having to go to the directly to entire the path name. Then does control or delete key combination works on Linux? Yes, it does. Just like Windows, we can use this combination to perform system restart. One difference is that you won't be getting any confirmation message and therefore, therefore reboot is immediate in Linux. Then how do you prefer to the parallel port where devices such as printers are connected. So how do we refer in Linux? So whereas uh, in Windows, you refer to the parallel port as LPT port. Under Linux, you refer it as slash dev slash LP. So LPT1, LPT2, LPT3 would be referred to as the slash dev slash LP0 slash dev slash LP1 and like this. Are drivers such as hard drive and floppy drives represented with drive letters uh, like in your uh, Windows? No, we have each drive and device have different designation. We know that they are represented as files. So for example, if a floppy is there, then it is referred to as slash dev slash fd0 file and slash dev slash fd1. If any hard drive is there, then slash dev slash hda, slash dev, slash hdb, and so forth, like this, okay? Then comes the command, explain the file permissions. So we have three kinds of file permissions, read, write, and execute. Read allows a user's user to open and read the file. Write allows the user to modify the file. Execute allows the user to run the file. Then how do you change the permission in Linux? So you can, you can change the directory 
permission or file permission using ch mode command and there are two types of ch mode uh, symbolic method and absolute method so symbolic method says that we can use signs like plus minus and equal to then we can how can how we can use ch mode target the file then plus minus or equal to permission and then file name so where permission can be read write and execute targets can be user group other or all okay and plus is for adding permission minus is for removing the permission and equals to is for setting the permission for example if you want to set the permission such as the user can read write and execute it and the member of the group can read and execute it and others may only read it so user ch mode u equals to read write execute group equals to read and execute and others only read and then file name right then comes absolute method the general syntax to changing file permission and using absolute method is file ch mode permission and file name so absolute method follows octal representation the leftmost digit is for the user middle is for user group and the right one is for all okay and the, this table explains how can we use so if i want execute permission so i will give dash dash and x write permission slash dash w and dash and execute and write permission dash w and x like this how we can give so dash dash and x is a 1 dash w dash is a 2 dash wx is a 3 and like this so for example if you want to set the permission such that user can read write and execute it and member of your group can read and execute it and other may only read it so read write execute is 4 4 is read permission Two is write permission, and one is execute permission. We want read write execute. So four, four plus two plus one. That is seven. <clears throat> Then we want execute and uh, write. Member of the group can read and execute it. So read is or oh, read is two. Sorry, read is four, and execute is one, so five. It here it will be five. Then only read permission for others, so only four. So seven five ch mode, seven five four and the file name. Okay. So suppose if we want to give only read write permission, then we will give six. Only read all permission. Read, write, execute. Then it will be seven. Right. Then comes the question: Then what are hard links? So hard links point directly to a physical file on the disk, and not the path name. So we create links, and they point to the physical file. And this means that if you remove the file, original file, the link will not break, since the link is for file. and it is not for the path where file is located okay then come what is the maximum length for a file name in linux so uh, any file name can have maximum 255 characters the limit does not include path name so therefore entire path name and file name would exceed 255 character then comes what are file names that are preceded by a dot in general file names are preceded that are preceded by dot are hidden files these files can be configuration files that hold important data and set up info setting these files as hidden files makes it less likely to be accidentally deleted so for if we want to make a hidden file we precede the file name by a dot 
Now, what is a virtual desktop? It serves as an alternative to minimizing and maximizing different windows on the current desktop. Using virtual desktops can clear the desktop when you can open one or more programs. Rather than minimizing or restoring all the programs as needed, you can simply shuffle between virtual uh, desktops with programs intact in each one. Okay, so we have many virtual desktops to handle many program, multi-programming system. What is PWD command? PWD command is for printing, print working directory command and uh, it shows the present directory where we are in. What are inode process ID? Inode, inode is a unique name given to each file by OS. Each inode has a unique inode number within a file system. So it restores various information about the files in Linux, such as ownership, file size, file type, access mode, and number of links, etc. And process ID is the identifier. It is a unique ID given to each process. It is simply used to uniquely identify any an active process throughout the system until the process terminates. So process ID is just for a process and it terminates when the process, once the process terminates. I know there's a number given to a file. Okay, and it has many more information. Then name the first process that is started by the kernel in Linux and what is its, its process ID. So the first process that is started by kernel is init process and its process ID is one. Then comes what is LVM and why is it required? So let us see what is LVM is logical volume management. It is a basically a tool that provides logical ma volume management for Linux kernels. It is being introduced simply to make physical storage management easier. It also includes allocating disks, stripping, mi uh, mirroring, resizing, logical volumes, etc. Its main advantages are increased, uh, increased abstraction, flexibility, and control. So it simply allows for flexible disk space management. It is easy, especially required to resize the size of the file system online. So in Linux, the size of LVM partition can be extended using LVExtend command and can be reduced using, using LVReduce command respectively. Then what is slash proc file system? So proc file system is a pseudo or virtual file system that provides an interface to the kernel data structure. It generally includes useful information about processes that are running currently. And it can also be used to change some kernel parameters at runtime and during execution. It is also regarded as a control and information center for the kernel. All files under this directory are named virtual files. So it is just like a virtual file system and handles the functioning of information about processes and some kernel parameters that can be changed at runtime using this directory. Then uh, comes the question, what do you mean by demons? So demons also refer to as background process. It is a long running Linux program that runs in background. So suppose we are running some uh, very long programs that may end for two, three hours, but we also want to do our functioning on Linux. So we can run it in background and it, it is called as a daemon. So they do not have any controlling terminal. Therefore they run in background. These are the processes that are generally started when the system is bootstrap and terminated uh, or end only when system shuts down. It is simply the way of extending the functionality of the base OS. It provides and offers several, several functions that are not available in OS. So its main purpose is to handle periodic requests and then forward the request to the appropriate programs for execution. So usually periodic tasks are used, are done by demons. Name the demon that controls print spooling process. 
So the uh, demon that controls is line printing demon. So in background it runs, and when we give a print command, it will just run in the background. We can do R functioning also on Linux by the time it is printing. Then uh, what is a zombie process? So zombie process also referred to as a defunction or dead process in Linux, and is a is a process that is finished the execution, but it's entry remains in the process table. It usually happens due to lack of correspondence between parent and child process. So this process occurs for the child process because parent process needs to read the, the status of the child process. Once it is complete using the wait system call, this process is removed from the process table. Now, what is the difference between cron and anacron? For cron, it is a program in Linux that is used to execute task at a scheduled time. It works effectively on machines that run continuously. Whereas Anacron is a program in Linux that is used to execute tasks at a certain intervals. It works eff effectively on machines that are powered off in a day or a week. So at regular intervals, we want to uh, run a program that is called as Anacron. So, uh, difference between cron and anacrons. Cron is a demon. It runs in background. Anacron is not a demon. It runs in the foreground only. Then cron can be scheduled by a normal user. Anacrons can be uh, can only be used by super users. It is considered for ideal for servers, and anacron is con considered ideal for desktops and laptops. Because at regular intervals, we shut down the desktops and laptops. Then cron, its minimal granularity is in minutes. And anacron's minimum granularity is only in days. So minimum days, we need to give that how many days it needs to run. Cron is used to execute scheduled pro commands. And anacron is used to execute commands periodically at a certain period of time. Then what is the load average in Linux? So load, load average, as the name suggests, is the average system load on Linux server being calculated over a given period of time. So the load average of Linux server can be found using top, top command, we have seen top command, and uptime command. It is simply used to keep the track of system resources. It is represented by decimal number starting at 0.00, .00. and it tells you the loads that load that the system has been under. So average load that system is using, we can get it by using top command and uptime command. So now what do you mean by shell script? Shell script as the name suggests is a script written for shell, especially for shell. Here script means programming language that is being used to control applications. It simply allows the execution of different commands that are entered in the shell. It generally helps you to create complex commands containing conditional statements, loops, and functions. It is very easy to debug, can simplify everyday automation process, and is much quicker as compared to writing big programs. Then, what are environment variables? Environmental variables are global setting that controls the shell's function, as well as that of other Linux programs. Another common term for environment variables is global shell variables. Then what are the different modes of using VI editor? There are three modes, command mode, edit mode, uh, and X mode. So command mode, this is the mode where you start in. Edit mode, this is a way, mode where, uh, which allows you to do text editing. So it is insert mode. And X mode is, this is the mode where you interact with VI with instruction to process a file. So in command mode, we use deletion and moving here and there in the VI editor. So we give some commands and we move and delete the files. Edit mode or insert mode, we insert some com, uh, files or commands or anything we want to write in the VR editor. And then comes X mode that is 
where we can interact with vi what we have to do with this file so escape when we press press escape then we come to command mode and when then we press colon then we come into x mode we give a command of q w q we have to save the file or we have to delete the file or we have to quit from it then comes uh, what is redirection so redirection is a process of directing data from one output to another it can also be used to direct an output as an input to another process so we know cat cat just prints the file but if we want to direct its command its uh, contents to a file then we can give cat file.txt so it will be standard output redirection if we want to have see the contents of a file we can give cat and this arrow and it is standard input redirection cat file name error message file to error message file this is standard error output redirection so if there if there is any error then it will be printed on the screen as well as it will be saved in this error message file so this is standard error output suppose if i want to give ls my file 2 and 1 so it will give me output and error also if there is any error then it will give then double arrow appends the new contents to end of the file or creates a new file so these are redirections standard input standard output error redirection standard error output and append what is grep command grep a search command that makes use of pattern based searching it makes use of options and parameters that are specified along with command line and applies this pattern in searching the required output field so if we want to search any pattern in a file then we can use grep command what could be the problem when the command that was issued gave a different result from the last time it was used so one high possibility uh, of getting different result from what seem to be the same command has something to do with case sensitivity issues since linux is case sensitive a, com a command that was previously used might have been entered in a different format okay from the present one so for example if you want to list all the files in the directory we should type ls in small letters and not the cap caps letters so typing in caps will result in error and if there is no program by that exact name or exist may produce a different output if we have a program with that name we can also make programs and uh, keep it in our libraries so there may be a program that is caps ls so if that program will run and we will have different output from whatever we are needing so that may be one of the cause then what are the contents of user local directory it uh, contains locally installed files this directory matters in environments where files are stored on the network so when we are using unix for networking there we use user local specifically locally installed files user uh, go to user local bin and user local lib etc another application of this directory is that it is used for software packages that are installed from the source or software not officially shipped with the distribution so how do you terminate an ongoing process every process in a system is identified uh, by a unique process id or pid so using kill command followed by pid to terminate that process to kill all the processes at once we use kill zero then comes uh, how do you insert command in command line prompt so how do you insert comments in command line prompt so comments are created by typing hash symbol before the actual command te comment text this tells the shell to completely ignore what follows so was we want to write the information about why we created one file why we created a prompt so we write a comment 
hash and we will just write this is just a comment for so that the user knows that what type of file is there usually we write comments like that then what is the command grouping and how does it works we can use parenthesis to group command for example if you want to send a current date and time along with the contents of a file named output to a second file name my dates so we can apply grouping date command cat output file and then redirecting it to my dates file okay so date and output are joined they are concatenated and they are moving on to my dates file so in using parenthesis we can group then how do you execute more than one command or program from a single command line entry so we can combine several commands by separating each command or program using semicolon so for example if i want to write ls hyphen l then cd dot dot then ls hyphen a my work these are three commands i can combine them using semicolon so they will work exactly at the same time and then uh, write a command that will look for files with an extension c extension c and has the occurrence of the string apple in it so find dot slash hyphen name star dot c it will the what will this command do it will find all the all the files having star dot c dot c extension and then giving its uh, output to xr grab hyphen i apple so occurrence of string apple in it we can find like this then write a command that would display all dot txt files including its individual permissions also so ls hyphen a and l star dot txt for all txt file for, for uh, including the permission ls hyphen a and l is for long listing then write a command that will do the following first it will look for all files in the current and subsequent directories with an extension c or v strike the v from the result so you we can use the std command we will see and using the result we use a grep on that result to search all of the occurrences of orange in the file so first part find dot slash hyphen name star dot c or v okay then we strike comma v from there so std s comma v and we we give nothing in the place of v and that is a global substitution so g for that so this is s for substitution this is the string to be replaced comma v and then a blank and blank is for that we we have to remove v from there and then a g g is for global substitution and then we this we find this result we get this result of till std and then we give it to xrs grep o r e n g orange so we will find how many occurrences of word orange is orange is there in those files then uh, comes a, com a question that what if anything is if anything is wrong with each of the following commands so ls let us see ls hyphen l hyphen s what is the problem there should be space between these two hyphen l and hyphen s okay then cat file 1 comma file 2 do not use comma to separate arguments squat file 1 file 2 okay then ls hyphen space s fact dir so there should no space between hyphen and options that is s here okay so these are a few wrong statements 
Then what is the command to calculate the size of a folder? To calculate the size, we put a command du hyphen sh and folder name. Okay. How can you find the status of a process? Status is found by ps ux. Then how can you check the memory status? So memory status free hyphen m to display output in mb and free hyphen g to display output in gb. Explain how to color the git console. So we can also con color our git console that is the console on which we are working. So we can use the command git config global color.ui auto. So in the command, the clear color.ui variable set the default value for a variable such as color.diff and color.where. So if we, we uh, see the path variables there, we can see what is a color.ui set to. So there we can color them. We can set the values there. Then uh, how do you, how can you append one file to another? So to append one file to another in Linux, you can use command cat file to then double arrow, double arrow is for append file one. So what will, what it will do? After completion of file two, it will start writing file one in file two. So these two files will be appended. So what it is written, the operator double arrow appends the output of the name file or creates file if it is not created while another command cat file one file two and then an output operator to file three appends two or more file to one so file one and file two will be copied to file three by this this command okay then explain how you can find a file using terminal so to find a file you have to give find command find dot hyphen name dot is for current folder hyphen name and then whatever file you want to search for process.txt so it will look for the current directory file called process.txt how can you create a folder using terminal we know the command for creating folder is mkdir then explain how can you view the text file using terminal so to view text file we go to specific folder where text files are located by using command cd and then typing less filename.txt. Then how can you run a Linux command in background simultaneously when you start your Linux server? So we use a command called nohub. It will stop the process receiving the nohub signal and thus terminating it to log out from the program which was invoked and the ampersand runs the process in background. So either we use no hub or we use an ampersand. Now comes the question, what are the process states? So process can be in these different states. First is ready state, process is created and it is ready to run. Then running, the process is being executed. Block or wait state, process is waiting for input from user or from anything else. Then it comes terminated or completed process completed execution or was terminated by the OS and there comes a zombie process. The zombie process is terminated, but information still exists in the process table. Okay, so that is called a zombie process. Then there's a question that why a tar, tar command is used. So let's see the answer. Tar command is used to extract or create archived files. So suppose we want to extract all the files from archived named sample.tar.gz then command we use is tar hyphen xvzf sample.tar.gz and suppose if you want to create an archive of the file on a particular path then tar hyphen cvzf file name.tar.gz here c creates the archive x extract the archive, v is for verbose input and f is the file. So tar command is used to combine one or more files and archive them. So for proper usage, proper, proper storage, maybe proper easily commuting the files from here and there, 
So that is why we archive the files. Now, what is latch? Latch is a temporary storage device controlled by timing signal, which can either store zero or one. So a latch has two stable, stable states. High output is one and low output is zero and is mainly used to store state information. A latch can store one bit or data as long as it is powered on. Then explain regular expressions. So regular expressions are used to search data having a particular pattern. When we, when we work with patterns, we use regular expression. So some of the commands used with regular expressions are tr, sed, vi, grep. Some of the com common symbols that are used in expressions are dot, dot is for match matching any character. Then we have this operator matching the beginning of the string, dollar matching the end of the string, star match zero or more characters and question mark match exactly one character. Then enlist some Linux to file content commands. So there are many commands, uh, file content command means that how we can enlist or we can view the contents of the file. So these are a few commands that are used to list the or look into or see the contents of the file. The first is head command that displays beginning of the file. Then tail command that displays last part of the file. Cat command, it used to concatenate and print the file on standard output. More command, more the, uh, it displays the content in page form, okay? And is used to view the text in the terminal window, one page or screen at a time. Less command displays the content in page form and allows backward and single line movement also. So uh, the question is, why is Linux considered more secure than other operating system? This is a very common question. So Linux is an open source operating system and nowadays it is grow growing rapidly in the tech world. Although the entire code written in Linux can be read by anyone, then also it is considered, but still it is considered more secure because Linux provides its user with limited default privileges, which are basically restricted to lower levels. That is in case of any virus attack, it will reach only local files and folders where a system-wide damage is saved and it is not done. So because of the privileges, the permissions that we give to users and others we can save our system files, okay? Then it has a powerful auditing system that includes detailed logs. So we have logging, logging system is very powerful. We can see what, what damage and how, which file has done what damage. Then enhance the features of I, you know, IP tables are used to use in order to implement a greater level of security. So IP table, tables are used IP is IP address ports. So we can have a look of all the IP addresses that are connected to a device. And then we can see that what level of security and how uh, damage can be done uh, by using which IP address has accessed which file and what it has done. So these detailed IP tables are there and we can see what each IP address is doing. Then Linux is tougher program formation before installing anything on your machine. So when something needs to be installed on our machine, it has to go through a very power, very tough program permission uh, process in Linux. So that is why it is not easy to install also anything easily on Linux. So that is why it is a bit more secure. Then comes the question, how to create a new file and modify an existing file in VI editor? Also enlist the commands that, is, that are used to delete the information. So commands for VI file name, we, what we do, first we write VI, then file name, and then hit an enter. So this command will use to create new file as well as modify any existing, already existing file name. Then we view this, this uh, how we view, just the file is open and we, this command is used to exist in the read-only mode there. Then we, to delete, 
we type a caps x this command deletes a character which is under the cursor or before the cursor location or small x is used or caps x is used and dd command is used to delete the current line and if we want to modify we go into insert mode by hitting an i and then we can write anything in vi edit then enlist some linux networking and troubleshooting commands every computer is connected to the network internally or externally for the purpose of exchanging information so network troubleshooting and configuration are essential part of network administration the network commands enable you to quickly troubleshoot connection issues with another systems and check the response of another host etc a network administrator maintains a system network that includes network configuration and troubleshooting so mentioned are the few commands that are used by network administrator for network handling so first is host name to view the host name domain and the ip address of the machine and to set the host name also we use it ping ping is used to check the remote server that is reachable or not if config to display and manipulate route and network interfaces it displays network configuration so ip is replacement of if config command then netstat netstat is uh, it displays network connections na routing tables interface statistics ss is replacement of netstat command which is used to get more information then tracer route it is a network troubleshooting utility that is used to find number of hops required for a particular packet to reach the destination trace path it is the same as tracer route uh, with a difference that it does not require root privileges then dig dig is a command used to query the dns main servers of any task related to dns lookup then ns lookup to find dns related queries route command it is you it shows the details of route table and manipulates ip routing table mtr this command is combines ping and track path to single command then if plug status this command tells whether the network cable is plugged in or out then uh, if there is a command uh, question that how do you copy a file in linux so we can use cp command to copy a file in linux the general syntax is cp source and destination suppose we want to copy a file file01.txt from a directory new linux to linux directory 1 then we give source cp file1.txt slash new slash linux then a space and then slash linux slash directory 1 that is the destination then how to terminate a running process in linux so every process has a unique process id to terminate a process we first need to find out the process id of that particular process so the ps command list all the running processes around along with their process id and then we use kill command to terminate the process so ps command will give the process id and suppose the process id is something 3581 so we will give command kill 3581 then how to rename a file there is no specific command to rename a file in linux but we can copy and then we can use move command mv command to rename the file so what is the method we first move first of all we copy old name to new name and then we move old name to new name so and then we remove the old name so if you want to uh, if you want to keep the old name file also then we do not use rm we just use cp and mv now how to write the output of a command to a file so you can use redirection operator to output of a command to a file so first command and then we redirect that command to a file how to see the list of mounted devices on linux so mount hyphen l then how to find difference in two configuration files so diff command is can be used for finding difference diff abc.com and xyz.com so write a bash bash script to delete all files in the current directory that contains one linux so what can be the uh, script we can uh, start a loop for i in linux do rm 
dollar i and done so suppose i is word is linux then remove i otherwise go to the next then how would you create text file without opening it which is the command touch command that can be used to create a file without opening it touch and file name how do you delete a directory so there are two ways rm directory name so these are this is used to delete non empty directories rm command and rm hyphen rf is used for recursive deletion everything in that directory will be deleted so using rn rm hyphen rf should be used carefully because because it will delete all data without any warnings how could you use how would you use a task in linux schedule a task so what are the ways to scheduling a cron cron tab is used okay so cron command is used to repeatedly schedule a task at a specific time a task are stored in cron file and then executed using cron command so the cron command reads a string from this file and schedules a task so the syntax of the string to enter the cron is minutes hour day month weekday and then command so suppose we want to run a command at 4 pm every sunday then the string would be 0 0th minute 16 that is 4 pm star every day it is using uh, every day every month and which day of the week 0th day that is sunday and command whatever command you want to give so add command is also used to schedule a task once once that we have set specified any time so suppose echo i want to print shutdown now at i will give a pipe and then at hyphen m 18 so this is the time when i want to schedule this task so at command is also used then come comes a question then suppose you try to delete a file using rm command and the deletion phase so what could be the reason so reasons can be the path specified on the file or file name mentioned might be wrong or the user is trying to delete a file that that might not having permission to delete he might not be having any permissions then how do you look at the contents of the file name sample.z so dot z means that the file has been compressed it is a zip file so to look at the contents of the compressed file we use zcat command so zcat sample dot z how to copy files to a floppy disk safely so what are the steps mount the for floppy disk copy the files and then unmount if we do not unmount floppy disk the data might become corrupted then how to identify which shell we are using we just echo dollar caps shell so this is a path variable which give this is a variable shell variable which gives us the name of the shell that we use now how can you log in into another system in your network from your system so we use ssh for logging in from another system ssh username at the rate ip address suppose you want to log into a system that has this ip address and username is mike then command will be ssh mike at the rate the ip address how do you sort entries in a text file in ascending order so we give command sort and sample.txt so entries of sample.txt will be sorted now what is the export command used for export export command is used to set and reload environment variables for example if you want to set java path then command can be export java home and the new path that you want to set there okay then comes explain free command so this command is used to display the free used and swap memories available in the system so typical command output displays outputs in bytes and we just write a free on the prompt and we get all the data 
So it says, uh, the next question says that name the different types of file systems in Linux. So we have different types of file systems and different variety of Linux have different implementation. So these can be ext, 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 ext2, 3, 4, JFS, XFS, and these all AutoFS, DevPTS, dev NTFS, SWAP, any kind of file system. There are many file systems where that are employed, deployed in the Linux. So explain DF command. DF is display free disk space. Command is used to troubleshoot dis, uh, access space problems. And DF hyphen H is used to see the space in any disk. So explain what does CDDIR and AND command do. So CDDIR and and command move the move to the direct dir and use the use to execute the command then returns to the current direct cd dir and and command so it will move to dir it will run this command and then it will come back to the current direct what are symbolic links so a symbolic link or a sim link is in linux is a file that points to another file or a folder on the computer its function is like, like shortcuts in window. Okay, it functions like shortcuts. It enables you to instantly access a program, file, or directory without having to go to directory to the directly to that entire path name. Symbolic links are also called soft links. So the features of symbolic links are a symbolic link is similar to file shortcut feature in Windows operating system. They can be linked across different file names, file systems. They contain the path for the original file and not the contents. Just the path of the original file name, symbolic links have. The syntax is ln hyphen s, target file, and symbolic file name. Hyphen s to create soft symbolic link. Target file is the name of the file, existing file for which you are creating that link and symbolic link name, that is this. Then comes, what are the different types of process management system calls in Linux? So process management are system fork. Fork is used to create a new process. Exec executes a new process. Wait, wait until a process execution. Exit, exit terminates the process. Get PID to find the unique process ID get PPID to find the parent process ID. And nice, bias the currently running program pro process property. Okay, so these were a few usually asked interview questions for you all. So next, we will meet in next meeting. Thank you so much.